Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we have a look at the nihilist cipher. The nihilist cipher was used by the Russian nihilists in the 19th century. It is a polyalphabetic cipher and quite interesting. And I recently updated it in Cryptool 2. If you're interested in using the cipher by yourself, Right now, you can only do this when you compile Crypto 2 by yourself. We are waiting for a new software signing certificate, and because of that, we cannot create new nightly builds right now. I hope within the next weeks, we will get our new certificate and will update our nightly builds. We structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, we will have a brief and very brief look at the Russian nihilists. Then we will have a more detailed look at the nihilist cipher. We will see how this cipher works, what the key space size is, and what's its unicity distance. And finally, of course, we will do it in Cryptool 2. We will create our own workspace with the nihilist cipher. The Russian nihilist movement was a philosophical cultural and revolutionary movement in the Russian Empire during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The main feature of Russian nihilism is the rejection of authority, state, church and family, and the striving for a liberal and atheistic society. In a broader sense, the entire reign of Tsar Alexander II that was from 1855 to 1881, is given as a time frame for Russian nihilism. And a distinction is made between a founding phase, which was from 1860 to 1869, and a revolutionary phase from 1870 to 1881. And from the 1870s, the term nihilist was increasingly used in connection with assassins who wanted to kill the Tsar or representatives of the Tsarist government. You can see a figure of these two guys here, two nihilists, who are or maybe were assassins and they are tied to chairs on horse-drawn platforms and paraded past groups of soldiers on their way to execution in St. Petersburg. And I found this figure on Wikipedia. By the way, I highly suggest that you read the articles on the nihilists on Wikipedia, because these give you a very detailed introduction, more that I can do in this video. Let's have a look at the nihilist cipher. And in the history of cryptography, the nihilist cipher is a manually operated cipher originally used by Russian nihilists in the 1880s. And the cipher comprises of a Polybius square, which is based on a first keyword and a second keyword, as we will see, which is used for encryption. And the nihilist cipher is, as I already have said in the introduction, a polyalphabetic cipher. Let's have a look at it in detail. The first step is the generation of the Polybius square that you can see here. To do so, you first select the first keyword, for instance, keyword, to create this. And then you write the keyword into the square and you omit double letters. For instance, if you have a keyword with two T, you would remove the second T and only the first T would remain. Conveniently, the keyword keyword has no double letters. So you write your keyword into the Polybius square here, K-E-Y-W-O-R-D, and then you fill the remaining part of the Polybius square with the remaining letters of the alphabet, as we did here. And on the left side of the Polybius square, you write the digits from one to five. And on the top, on top of the columns, you also write one, two, three, four, five. So we have in total 25 letters here means I and J share the same letter, in this case, the I. In the second step, you generate the key numbers. To do so, you select a second keyword, for instance, secret. And then you convert it to numbers using our Polybius square. For instance, we have here the secret. And to convert the S to digits or to numbers, you have a look into the Polybius square where the S is. The S is here. I colored it red so that you can easier see it. And here on the left side, you have a four and on the top, you have a five. So we write 
45. Then we have the E. The E is 1, 2, as you can see here. So we have E, 12. Then we have the C, 25. This is here, 25. 21 is the R. This is 21. Then again the E, the 12. And then the T, this is 51. So you convert your second keyword, in this case secret, for instance, to numbers. And then in the last step, in step three, you encrypt your plain text. Let's assume your plain text is hello world. The first thing you have to do is to also convert it to numeric numbers. And you do this the same way you converted the keyword. So our hello world becomes 33, 12, 35, 35, and so on. This is now our numeric number plain text. Then you write the key numbers below this. This here is secret, S-E-C-R-E-T. And then when you wrote the keyword, you write it again. Here we have S-E-C-R and so on. And you repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until the end. Then you can compute your ciphertext by just adding the numbers. For instance, 33 plus 45 is 78. And this is our first ciphertext symbol, 78. Then we have 12 plus 12 is 24, 35 plus 25 is 60, and so on. And this is the way you generate your plain text. And of course, on the receiver side, you do all the steps again. You, of course, need to know both keywords, one for the generation of the Polybius square and the second keyword for the generation of your key numbers. And then you do it backwards. You write your ciphertext symbol or number in the lower um, row, then you write your key numbers above these, and then you just subtract 78 minus 45 is 33, 24 minus 12 is 12, and so on. So you have your numeric plain text numbers here on the top. And then you go backwards through the Polybius square. You have here 33, we have a look at 33, and 33 is H, so we have H here. Then we have 12, 12 is here, this is the E, and so on, and you can reveal the plain text doing so. Now that we know how the nihilist cipher works, let's have a look at the key space size. And the key space size is a number of all keys that the cipher allows you to choose. And we have two different parts of the key space. The first one is the size of the Polybius square, or the number of possible Polybius squares you can generate or create. And Polybius squares, you can generate 25 factorial. You have 25 positions in your Polybius square with 25 different letters you, have, you can assign to each square. So in the first um, hole and or in the first position of your Polybius square, you have 25 letters to choose from, then 24, then 23, 22, 21, and so on. And this is 25 factorial, which is about 2 to the power of 83.6 different Polybius squares. So this is our Polybius square key space. Then, of course, you have to choose or you have the possibilities to choose keywords. And you can choose for the first position in your keyword 26 letters, then in the, in the second position, in the third. Actually, this has to be 25 because I and J is combined, but in our case, we also added the J here in this part. So this is 26 to the power of N for all keywords of length N. And all keywords of length N have to be added. So you have N with one for keywords of the length one, N equal to two for the keywords of length two and so on. And for our example here, we now say that we want to count all the keywords up to length 10. So all keywords of length 10 with length 9, 8, and so on. And we computed this, and this is about 2 to the power of 47. This is the key space size for keywords with 26 characters. So our total key space is then the combination of these two key space sizes. This is 25 factorial multiplied k10, which is the key space of our keywords up to the length of 10 characters. And this is about 2 to the power of 83.68. This is the total key space size of the nihilist ciphers. Now 
let's compute the unicity distance. And the unicity distance is the number of letters you need or you have to have in a ciphertext that you can get a unique solution. So only one meaningful plain text. And I made a video about how to compute this. And if you're interested, please have a look at my channel, how to do so. Here we just computed it. We took the entropy of the key space and the entropy of the key space here, two to the power of 83.68 is our key space size. This is a logarithm with the base two. This is just 83.68. And you divide it by the redundancy of the assumed plain text language. This is in our case English and English has a redundancy of 3.2. So we get a result of 26.15 for the unicity distance of the nihilist cipher. Probably it's a bit smaller than this because we use 26 here in the computation instead of 25. So our result for the unicity distance is 26 or you have to round it up 27. So you need at least a cipher text of length 27 so that you can obtain only a unique solution. Now that we know how the nihilist cipher works, how you can create it by yourself, let's encrypt and decrypt using the nihilist cipher component of Cryptool2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool2 in a developer build that I created on my own PC because as I said in the introduction, I updated the nihilist components. So if you want to test it on your own, you have to wait for the new nightly builds that will be published within the next weeks, I hope, or you have to download Crypto2 source code and build it by yourself. And as I said, I'm here in the start center and I want to show you the updated nihilist component. And to do so, I create my own workspace. I create a new workspace by clicking on this icon here and I get an empty workspace. And then I search for nihilist cipher and drag and drop one nihilist cipher component on the workspace. As you can see, it has three inputs. It has a text input, input text for plain and cipher text. It has a keyword one input and a keyword two input. And it has an output here for plain text or cipher text. Now let's add a few text inputs. So as I said, we need plain text here. Then we need a keyword here. This is our first keyword. And uh, we need a second keyword, just copy it. And this is keyword two. Then we connect the text input with the input here for the text. The keyword one, the keyword two. And since I want to also decrypt the um, created uh, ciphertext, I just copy this here. I connect it here. Of course, we want to see our ciphertext. I mark these two components and say biggest width and biggest height. This allows us to have the same size of text input and output for plain and ciphertext. This here will be our ciphertext. And we copy this for our decrypted plain text. So we have here decrypted plain text. Then we have to connect our keyword one and we have to connect our keyword two. Then we make this a little nicer. This is keyword two, keyword one. Yeah, I like this. For the keyword one, we choose secret. And for the keyword two, we choose keyword. And the component here automatically takes care that the second E is removed in the internally created Polybius square. Now let's configure the components. The first component is set to encrypt. Our alphabet is 25 letters. We will have a look at this later also because you can choose your different alphabets. And then how should unknown symbols be handled? I say please just ignore these. In the second component, we of course change the action to decrypt. Then I zoom in a little. And now we need a test text. Hello world. This is a test of the new nihilist cipher component. I think you can also write lowercase. This is a test of lowercase. 
because the um, component internally automatically changes every letter or every Latin letter to uppercase. So let's test it. When we press play, you can see we get here our numbers and these numbers are um, separated here also so it keeps the spaces here. And here we have our decrypted plain text. So let's stop this and make this uh, biggest width so we can see a little more. Yeah, and I don't like the, the formatting of these. So what I prefer is to remove all unknown symbols and we get a nicely formatted cipher text here. Of course, we lose our spaces then in the plain text. But as you can see here, we have hello world. This is a test of the nihilist cipher component. And this is a test of lowercase. So this works really nicely. And as I said, you can also change the alphabet of this component to a bigger one. And you can say we want to have 26 letters and also digits. And that I think is really nice. So hello world. One, two, three, four, five. And now our internally created Polybius square is not five by five, but six by six. And this means we have 10 or 11 additional positions in our square. One position is used for the letter J. So we have here, we can use I and J now. And the other 10 positions are then used for digits. And now let's encrypt and decrypt here. And as you can see now, the adapted nihilist cipher with the bigger alphabet allows you to encrypt digits and INJ. And here you can see that the decryption also works. And another nice thing is that you can use digits now in your key. For instance, we could add the one, two, three, four, five here. Now we have a keyword with Latin letters and digits. And you can do the same also here with the keyword. And it still works and it still encrypts and decrypts using the nihilist cipher. Yeah, and I think this is a nice addition to Crypto 2. We previously had an implementation of the nihilist cipher that I didn't really like because it didn't work on text, it worked on binary data and so on. So it was a very outdated version of a component. Now it's updated. As I said, if you want to test it, you have to wait for new nightly builds or download the source code and uh, build your own Crypto 2 using Visual Studio on your computer. But I hope that we will have new nightly builds in the next weeks. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I have shown you the nihilist cipher implemented in Crypto 2, how you can use it and how it works. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything. I hope you liked what I did in this video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and also to make Crypto 2 more popular. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.